Hi everyone, I'm in the garden again today um, and the reason why I'm in the garden is that I've got this massive big aloe vera plant here that's been here for a couple of years. It's only been fed and watered by what we get from the rainfall here and we've had a, a very wet spring and summer. Um, but this plant is in such a good spot, it's very happy and it's massive. The leaves are like that wide, some of them. Anyway, I've got all this wonderful aloe vera in my garden, so I was really inspired to make some aloe vera soap, make some more, and make another batch showing you a different method. So today I'm going to make hot process aloe vera soap. I'm gonna make it in my slow cooker up inside in the kitchen, and I'm gonna take some of this fresh aloe gel. And instead of putting the aloe gel through the process to make the lye solution, like I did for my other cold process aloe vera soap recipe, in this one, I'm going to blend up the gel and I'm just going to add it to the soap batter. So it's going to show you a, an alternative way to make aloe vera soap. Um, so I'm just going to select one of these leaves. They are really massive, well more than I'm ever going to, to need. I'm going to see if I can take one from the bottom here. Didn't bring a knife with me. <laughs> Here we go. So this is not even one of the biggest leaves, but look how big and thick that is. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. I only need 50 grams of aloe vera for this recipe, and I'm gonna have well and truly enough in that one leaf. Some of these other leaves are at least another half size, as big as that again. Amazing, love it. All right, see you in the kitchen. <laughs> so to get this recipe started, I get my fats and my oils ready and get them melting. This starts off with 75 grams of cocoa butter. This is a really easy recipe. This would be a perfect hot process soap recipe for beginners so if you want to start out and this, this would be a great recipe to try. Uh, next, I'm adding some olive oil, 300 grams in total. I'm using up to two different types of olive oil here, but they will both work as long as they're 100% olive oil. It doesn't matter if they're slightly refined or if they're extra virgin, as long as it's olive oil. Next, 225 grams of rice bran oil. This is a basic recipe. As I said, it's um, I'm just using up some of the, the oil, common oils that I have lying around. Next is 150 grams of coconut oil. That will give this a really nice lather. Um, straightforward recipe, but really nourishing, simple to make, and uh, fairly well balanced given its simplicity. So I add the liquid oils into the cocoa butter and then turn the slow cooker or the crock pot up to high. You don't have to start on high, but I like to make my processes as quick and efficient as I possibly can with my soap making. So I turn it on high just, just for a little while, just to give it all a kick start because I want that cocoa butter to melt. And while I'm doing that, I get my aloe ready. Check out the size of this leaf. It is so juicy. This is my method for getting the gel out of the aloe leaf. I take a sharp knife and slice the spiny parts off the side of the leaf. Just start at the top and just cut all the way down to take those, those spiky edges off. And then with the spoon, don't use a knife because you'll cut the leaf. It's a lot easier with the spoon. Just face the spoon with the cup sort of side facing up as you would normally use it. And then push along the leaf in between the leaf and the gel, um, pressing up against the leaf. And the spoon will separate the leaf from the gel perfectly for you. And then turn your spoon around and do the same thing on the other side, push down, and you'll end up with this amazing fillet of aloe vera gel. <laughs> it's a really good method for taking the aloe gel out of the leaf. I love it because if, if you use a knife, it ends up cutting the leaves, but the, the, um, the spoon just works every time. And it looks a bit like a fish. It reminds me of filleting fish so much. So once you've got your aloe gel, just uh, chop that up. Make sure you're using everything nice and clean. Chop that up and put it into a jug, something that you can use uh, to blend it. 
because we want to liquefy this gel. So this is my trusty old stick blender that has seen better days, if I'm honest. It sounds a little bit sad in this video. I do have a backup one ready for when it dies on me, <laughs> but it's still going, so I'm still using it. So just blend your aloe <laughs> until it gets as smooth as you possibly can. Like give it a really, really good blending. You want to completely break down all the fiber in the gel, in the plant. And once you've got it really liquefied, just measure out 50 grams. That's all you need for this aloe soap recipe. I accidentally over poured it and then I, this was a bad decision, but I ended up putting 70 grams in. Um, and this is a jar of aloe liquid that I actually had in the fridge from the day before. And you can see how the fiber all went to the top. So that's a neat way to sort of um, treat it as well. You can get the liquid out that way if you mix it up the day before and then let it sit all the all the fibrous part will float to the top anyway 50 grams of aloe gel that's basically what you need quick little interlude here just to let you all know about my membership group if you're not aware of it um, it's really affordable it's really fun and if you like podcasts and soap making and sourdough bread making you might really enjoy it Head to buymeacoffee.com slash Ellie's Everyday slash membership if you'd like to check that out. Now back to the recipe. So now we're going to make the lye solution for the soap recipe. You need your safety gear for this. So I've got my goggles that go over my glasses and I've got gloves. And now I'm ready to measure out my sodium hydroxide. So for this lye solution, we're using 100 grams of sodium hydroxide, otherwise known as caustic soda. Make sure you see my lye safety video if you're new to soap making. It's really important that you know what you're doing when you're handling this material. Cover that up straight away and put it somewhere safe. Now I get the water ready. I'm using 200 grams of water for this lye solution and half of that I'm using ice. And that's because it was a really hot day outside and I had the air conditioning on in the house. So I had all the windows shut. Um, and if you use half ice for your lye solution, uh, it doesn't give off any fumes or very, very minimal. So that's a really good trick. So when you're ready, just slowly pour the sodium hydroxide into the water ice solution. Never the other way around. Always pour the caustic soda into the water. That's really, really important and just give it a mix. You'll find that if you use ice in the mixture, it'll stay so cool and you won't get any horrible gas that comes off it. So that's a, a good trick, as I said. Next, I get my essential oils ready. For this recipe, I'm using very simple, lovely Australian native oils, tea tree and eucalyptus, 20 grams of tea tree and 10 grams of eucalyptus. I find that they just, I don't know, they just really suited the aesthetic of this soap. Um, I'm using, I used three teaspoons of French green clay and that made this soap a lovely, nice, pale, natural green color. You could probably use four teaspoons if you wanted to make it a little bit more vibrant, um, darker green, but three teaspoons was good enough for me. Just play around with the clay. You can add a little bit more or a bit less depending on your taste. All right, so the fats, you can see the cocoa butter was all melted there um, and I blended the clay in with my stick blender into the oils and then I've poured the lye solution in and I'm starting to mix the soap. My poor old stick blender, it does make some terrible sounds. I think I, I probably start need to use the, use the backup one that I've got in my videos. But basically you just want to blend this batter until it thickens. It doesn't take long, um, probably less than a minute, but you just want to blend it and make sure the mixture is fully mixed. And then once you've blended it a little bit, you can add your aloe vera. So this is fresh aloe vera that I blended that morning. It's just going straight into the soap butter. You'll notice here that once the aloe goes in, the soap butter thickens up quite quickly. 
And I think that's because aloe vera naturally is going to have some sugars in it and sugars do speed up saponification or they do accelerate um, the trace or the chemical reaction that happens when um, oils and fats mixed with the lye solution turn into soap. So you can see it goes really thick and glossy. It almost looks a bit like guacamole at this point. <laughs> um, but it thickens up super quick once you put the aloe in. So once you've got that all mixed and it's nice and homogenous and it's too thick to stick blend anymore, just give it a good stir with your spoon. Scrape down the sides of your crock pot so there's no bits that can get dried out and crusty on the edges. Smooth it all out. Turn your crock pot down to low. Um, I just checked the temperature here. It's fairly low still, it's only 54 C which is about 120 um, and that's between 50 and 80 Celsius is a good temperature to cook your hot process soap. Any higher than that is, is too high. So cover it up and leave it on low for about 15 to 20 minutes until the soap starts to gel. So you can see here it's a darker colour. Uh, it has started to transform and turn into soap. So you can see me just gently having a little look at it there. Um, you can see it's a little bit frothy. It looks a little bit like maybe mashed potatoes. Um, and there's all sorts of different phases that hot process soap goes through when you're cooking it. This soap definitely went through that pudding phase, that thick phase at the beginning and, and this mashed potato phase. But eventually we're looking for it to go kind of glossy and vaseline -y and nice and gelled and translucent. I just spray a bit of water on top of my soap. I love to do that with my hot process soap recipes because it prevents them drying out. You don't want crusty bits in your hot process soap. I'm not a big fan of that. Anyway, so the temperature's really up nice and high now. It was close to 77 degrees Celsius there, which is perfect. So I left it for another 10 minutes or so, turned the temperature off, and now I did test this soap with pH strips and by this stage it was done. It was ready to go. And as long as it's under 80 degrees Celsius, it's cool enough to put your essential oils in. You can let it sit a little bit longer and let it cool down a little bit. Taking it out of the cooker like I've done, that helps to um, cool it down a little bit. But once it's cool enough, pour the essential oils in, mix them through thoroughly, and then it's ready to go in the mold. It's as simple as that. Hot process soap making is so satisfying and so fun. A lot of people think that it's a really quick made way to make soap though, and that you can use it straight away. Kind of technically you can, because it has, um, it should be completely saponified by the time it's finished being cooked, as this recipe was. Um, but really you should leave it for at least a month to really get nice and mild um, and to let it harden properly. This is a reasonably high liquid um, soap amount which keeps the hot process soap nice and fluid and easy to handle. So it does, it does benefit from a good couple of weeks to dry out. And cleaning up after hot process soap making is an absolute breeze. You just put your crock pot <laughs> in your sink and fill it with water and let it soak for a little bit and it all just comes off. There's no oil because it's all turned to soap. So I, I love that part about hot process soap making. It's really cool. And here's the soap a couple of days later. I left it in the mold for a couple of days, partly because I was just really busy. You can see it got some lines from the draining, the rack that I had it sitting on because it is a little bit soft, but it will harden beautifully especially if you only used 50 grams of aloe vera and not 70 grams like I did. But anyway, so I, I cut it. Um, it's gorgeous soap. Hear all those birds in the background. Uh, I love the colour. It's, it's just subtle. It's green. It just says to me aloe vera. And with the tea tree and eucalyptus essential oil, it's really fresh. And I think they really complement the fact that this ingredient came out of my garden and they're Australian native um, plants, the eucalyptus and the melaleuca. Um, so that was really nice, but you can fragrance it with your own favorite essential oil if you want to, or a fragrance oil. You could add other colors. You could even leave the aloe vera out of this and just make this as a plain hot process soap recipe. And there you have it. 
I hope that was helpful for all of you. And if you're a beginner to hot process soap making, I think this would be a really great one to start with. I'll put a link to everything that's relevant to this in the description box below the video. Thanks for watching everyone. See you again next time. Bye.